Hello everyone, Father Brett here. Welcome to Sermon Prep. This is an opportunity for us to look at the readings the Church gives us every Sunday, to identify themes and to look at the context so that when we come to celebrate uh, Eucharist on Sunday, we can hear more clearly God speaking to us. So, what are the readings that are given for this first Sunday of Lent? The first reading is taken from the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 to 15. And it speaks of the flood of Noah and the covenant God makes with Noah and his people after the dreadful flood. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 25. And our response, All you, your paths, O Lord, are mercy and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. And so we are reminded of the covenant. Covenant is the relationship that exists between us and God. And throughout Lent, we will be reminded of this covenant, that we are in a special relationship with God. We hear about it in the first reading, and we respond in our psalm by recalling the covenant. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. Our Gospel is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 12 to 15. Well, it, it's not long ago we read that Gospel as well. So, What's, what would you say an overriding theme is for this Sunday? I would say baptism. There are echoes of baptism even in our gospel. The gospel is the story of Jesus going out into the desert. We know that he will be tempted in the desert. The desert is a place, a symbol of testing, of challenge in the scriptures. Remember God's people as they made their way from Egypt through to the Holy Land, the Promised Land. They wander through the desert for 40 days, for 40 years, sorry. It was a time of challenge, a time of testing, a time to bring them to face themselves and God and to turn to him. So the desert is always a, a symbol in the scriptures of testing. And we know Jesus is tested and tempted in the desert. But what happens immediately before that? Of course, Jesus is baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. And so even though that's not mentioned here in our gospel extract for this Sunday, we, we have it in the back of our minds that Jesus is baptized by John and he then goes out into the desert to face these challenges and temptations and then begins his ministry. So there are echoes of baptism even in the gospel despite the fact that it doesn't actually speak of baptism. The uh, second reading, St. Peter's first letter, clearly makes the link for us between baptism of the New Testament and the waters of the flood. If we look at Genesis chapter 9. We will immediately recall, I hope we will, that it appears in the early part of the book of Genesis. Chapters 1 to 11 in the book of Genesis 
speak about the brokenness of relationships. The relationship between God and His people, between family members, between married couples, but also the brokenness between uh, human beings and the whole of creation. That's, as I said, those first 11 chapters of the Bible. Chapter 9, obviously, is in that section. And so we are aware as we read this story of the flood that it is situated in a, a time, in a period, when there was brokenness, there was sin, and there was the breakdown of relationships. And the flood comes to purify all this brokenness and sin. It symbolizes God cleaning out all this sin and failure. And it is linked clearly with a new beginning. The fact that a covenant is formed between God and Noah, the symbol of which is the rainbow in the sky, is a sign, a symbol of a new beginning. That people had failed and gone away from God, and through the purifying waters of the flood, they are renewed and the relationship is restored and a new covenant is formed. And in the second reading, the first letter of St. Peter, that's, that's clearly explained. And it is linked to baptism. The baptism... The waters of baptism are a cleaning, a purification, a, a, a removal of sin so that we can come into a better relationship with God. So there is, in, in uh, all three readings, the theme of baptism. Dear friends, and that links clearly with the period of Lent. Lent is a time of purification, of preparation for baptism, receiving new men and women into the church, making them Christians. So it's a time of preparation for that great event that happens on um, on Holy Saturday at the Easter Vigil, but it's also a time of preparation for us who are baptized Catholic Christians, a time of preparation so that we can renew our baptismal promises. If you stop and reflect for a moment on that wonderful liturgy, it's a bit complex, but it is a wonderful liturgy on Holy Saturday night, the Vigil with the lighting of the fire and the candle, but also the, the, the uh, blessing of the water, the sprinkling of water uh, through the church, the renewal of baptismal promises, it all builds to that wonderful time, opportunity, moment when we can renew our baptismal promises. So Lent is about baptism, really. It's about preparing ourselves to renew our baptismal promises. Because our baptismal promises are at the center. They are the foundation of our life with God. On the last Friday of uh, ordinary time, so last Friday, the Gospel reading was also from St. Mark's Gospel, but it was chapter 7, I think. And in that Gospel, we heard the story of the uh, miraculous healing of the deaf and mute man in the Decapolis region. 
And Jesus says the words, Ephata, be opened, as he unseals the man's ears and loosens his tongue. It is that gospel that is recalled in the Ephata rite at baptism. After the baby has had water poured on its head and had chrism placed on its head, the priest celebrates, or deacon, celebrates the Ephata rite. He blesses the ears of the infant and its mouth so that it can hear God's word and proclaim the praises of God. And in many ways, that rite is overlooked. But it is, as Pope Benedict XVI said, really at the center of the mission of Jesus. A mission he begins after his temptation in the desert. He goes to proclaim God, to speak God's word to others. He hopes, he wants them to hear it, and once they have heard it, to settle it in their heart and then proclaim it afterwards. And so the whole mission of Jesus perhaps could be summed up in one word, Ephata, be opened. That is the mission of the church, isn't it? To open people to the gospel, to help them to speak of Jesus. And it is at the center of the baptized Christian, Christian's life. And so that little rite, Ephata, is so important. It is that that we are called to be and do. And so it too is situated within baptism. Once we are purified, once we are washed clean, we are better able to hear God's word and to proclaim God's word, to sing out his praises. And so, dear friends, as we make our way through Lent, perhaps we can reflect on that. Lent is a time of preparation for the renewal of our baptismal vows so that we can listen more attentively to God's word and sing out his praise and speak of, of Jesus to others. So baptism, the importance of baptism, its situation at the start of our Lenten journey, recalling what baptism is about and relationship with, with God, and we will see it more clearly at the end of Lent. I hope that helps you to situate these readings and understand them a little bit better. Anyway, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent. I hope that you all have a really good Lent, a holy Lent, that you will participate in all the many activities we have here in our parish so as to strengthen your relationship with Jesus. Look at your lives and see areas where there needs to be a bit of a change to be more faithful to the baptismal promises we have made. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. God bless. Bye-bye.